Uh, first of all, thank you for the organizers to give me this opportunity to present my uh, work. So uh, this work is done in Alto uh, with the collaboration with some uh, other uh, that I will show you in the rest. And then about the main thing here is about calculating the uh, noise in quantum circuit, the uh, main uh, activity about the theory part is uh, a collaboration with uh, Frederick Brange and Peter Samuelson from Lund University. Uh, okay, so uh, here uh, to start with the, how to measure the heat current, I should mention that, okay, for example, here uh, consider that you have an absorber with the heat capacity uh, C and then temperature T. By, uh, if we somehow apply the power uh, to this absorber, which is uh, thermally coupled with the thermal conductance to the uh, phonon bus. Uh, uh, if this we uh, turn on this power, continuous power, so then uh, the temperature uh, of the absorber uh, have these uh, changes in the temperature with the main ch change difference uh, will be power divided by uh, thermal conductance. If one can have this uh, fast thermometry, even uh, it's possible to see uh, and measure uh, the fluctuations of uh, the power and temperature uh, in this regime. But about the detecting uh, um, single uh, quanta like electrons, phonons, or uh, all energetic uh, quanta like this, so uh, if we inject some heat pulses like this with the energy E. So then, that, uh, as you, can, uh, you could see in the previous talk uh, yesterday, in Peter's talk, so then the temperature uh, will change based on E over C, and then, then relax back to the base temperature with this time constant C over G thermal. <laughs> Mm, by itself, uh, mm, detecting this uh, single quanta, single photon, is not something uh, new. So this back to uh, 1984, uh, which is detecting this uh, single photon of an X-ray. And uh, it's the same feature as you can see here. But for the microwave photon detection, um, the energy which is possible to detect is almost 10 to <coughs> 8 times smaller. So that is very demanding and it's not uh, somehow detecting yet. And uh, so what we need here for this uh, energy resolution here, which is proportional to the uh, heat capacity, which is, should be as small as possible, and then the uh, thermal conductance to the phonon bus, which is, uh, it should be a very weak coupling to the phonon bus, and then uh, our thermometer, which should be very sensitive, and uh, it should have somehow less noise. So this is our all these things that we need to uh, detect this uh, microwave photon detection. Okay, so, but uh, for detecting such kind of things, so we need some uh, other prerequisites for um, preparing this. So I start with this, um, how to measure heat current by itself. So I start with this uh, theoretical paper, quantum auto refrigerator. Here you can see the qubit uh, in the middle. It is uh, mutually coupled to two um, RLC uh, um, resonator here. Uh, and uh, it can be this, uh, and somehow these resistors here are works as a thermal bath uh, and with different temperature, hot bath and the cold bath. So uh, if we apply magnetic flux to this uh, uh, qubit, uh, so this setup can work as a refrigerator. But how? So here you can see the um, uh, thermodynamic cycle of uh, this uh, circuit, as you can see here. So this is uh, the system, this mm, qubit here, which is somehow is a two-level system. And uh, so we tune this that um, when it's in this uh, smaller range, so this uh, qubit should be in the resonance with the cold bath uh, with this circuit, and then in these uh, legs for, um, by applying this flux. So when we are here, so it, uh, the qubit is in the resonance with the hot pass. 
So here, for example, uh, we are when the qubit, the population of the qubit is determined by the cool bath. So uh, by applying the flux from zero to half, from here to here or from here to here. So uh, this is somehow like an azentropic expansion. So the qubit is thermally uh, decoupled from the two bases and then it's like an expansion of uh, this. So, and then uh, in this leg, so uh, then um, the qubit is in the resonance, uh, with the resonance with the hot bath. So then the uh, energy transfer from the hot bath uh, to the qubit and then we have this isentropic compression. So then again, the qubit is uh, thermally decoupled from the two bases. And then the other end, which is uh, thermalization with the cold bath, the um, heat from, goes from the um, cold bath to the qubit. OK, I said it wrong from the beginning. So from here to here and from here to here. And uh, by uh, if we continue, so it uh, works as a uh, refrigerator here so and then uh, I don't want to go to the detail how uh, we calculate this so as uh, you can see that uh, we this is a, a golden rule for the um, calculating the transition rates between the uh, states and then here by uh, writing the master equation for the population for just for um, notice that here we consider this off diagonal term for the density matrix because it's very important uh, and then here uh, we calculated the uh, transmitted power uh, from the uh, for to, from the resistors uh, um, to the qubit so here is which is depends on the uh, instantaneous uh, energy of the qubit and then it's determined by the uh, diagonal uh, parts of uh, the uh, density matrix and uh, okay so the whole um, the power uh, it's um, to the cold bath, it's, uh, it's like this, so it's cooling bath because it's minus term. So we notice that we have a three different regime. Uh, so first of all, for uh, this is a very nice part that uh, you can see because in the uh, high, um, high uh, frequency, uh, this because uh, we drive the system very fast, so then uh, the things that it's happened. So uh, here you can see this. Um, then it's uh, somehow it's impossible to uh, for um, uh, for the qubit to stay in one state. So uh, then it's the uh, coherent oscillation of the uh, qubit. It just uh, comes to the uh, to this power. So you can see this uh, coherent oscillation here, uh, which spans from um, based on the uh, energy difference between the level spacing of the qubit and uh, the, uh, another part is at very low frequency regime, so we have the quadratic uh, behavior of this, as you can see here, the dimensionless power and the dimensionless frequency here. So what is lambda here, this um, coefficient here? So if we consider this uh, only diagonal part, which is uh, somehow written here, we have this lambda, which is a classical uh, contribution of uh, this. So, um, but uh, by writing the uh, full uh, master equation here and considering the off diagonal, which is written in the paper. So here we have this extra term, which is the quantum correction. We introduce this as a quantum correction. And the interesting thing about this quantum, so it is the uh, combination of these two terms here, which comes there. And uh, the interesting thing here is this part is um, positive because all the terms here are positive and this uh, transition to the uh, lower state is just uh, higher than uh, psi up. And then when we uh, combine these two together, so it means that, that the quantum coherence decreases the performance of the refrigerator. Okay, and then uh, here, for uh, uh, another part, which is somehow like a near, nearly uh, auto uh, and cycle, uh, which is somehow it's a um, linear part. So this is how we try to detect this part. So this is the um, uh, photo uh, somehow by Jordan from our group, the experimental uh, part of the uh, group, at, as you can see here, the structure. So we expected about one femtowatt cooling power at uh, one gigahertz um, driving frequency. And then uh, if we can see this, even this, 
uh, coherent uh, oscillation in the power, it will be the first time that one can see this uh, in qubit and in, in thermal. So, uh, so how, to, how we need? This is all these things we need this uh, thermometry thanks to nice uh, talk uh, given by Giagiotto here. Uh, so then I don't need to explain these things uh, here because it's, it was uh, given there. So it's about the uh, NIS thermometry. So we have this tunnel probe uh, from the superconductor and then isolator and normal metal. So the interesting thing here is the, in the thermometer that uh, it's only uh, depends on the temperature of the uh, normal metal because of this uh, Fermi distribution of, the, of this. And then as you can see here, this uh, um, <laughs> nice uh, IV, uh, simple IV curve of the NIS. So it is in the very uh, low temperature and then you can see that by uh, increasing the temperature, so these uh, features smeared and then by measuring the conductance of it, so we can use it as a, um, as a thermometer so for our um, calibration. So uh, here you can see that uh, this is uh, the uh, the group of experiment uh, so uh, that uh, we um, so we try to uh, measure this uh, heat uh, current um, by the same setup exactly but um, we use it as a heat switch so in this case um, first this um, we use the identical uh, resonator here so and then of course the next step uh, that we are looking at is to, to make it different and then use it as a refrigerator but here these two for this heat switch they are uh, identical and this is the uh, setup that you can see here so this is somehow the somehow less artistic uh, um, uh, yeah, less artistic picture of the poster of the conference that you see always um, and then uh, here, this is the circuit, so um, this is uh, the transmon type qubit here in the middle. And then uh, we have the two identical uh, um, coplanar waveguide here as a uh, resonator. And this is our squid, and then it is uh, somehow shunted by these um, two uh, resistance here, and we use it as a, uh, some, so this is the SNS, and then we use this NIS. Uh, for our uh, thermometer to measure. So the uh, things that we did, so we apply uh, heat here and then we try to measure uh, heat current from the other side. Based on the two uh, um, model that we, ha we had, two sample and two model, which describe uh, things here. So for example, uh, for the first um, uh, sample that we had about the, uh, we named it as a non-Hamiltonian. So this qubit here, uh, um, which is coupled to these two RLC, and uh, the important thing is about the coupling between the uh, LC and then the resistor here, so which is proportional uh, to the uh, quality factor of the resonator, and then we have this uh, coupling term here. So we uh, notice that if the coupling here, so for the uh, somehow very low uh, quality factor. It means that uh, the, uh, the coupling here um, is somehow um, proportional to uh, this equation for the low around three uh, to five uh, for the quality factor. Uh, so the power transmitted from the um, hot bus um, to the cold bus is given by this equation, which is N here is the population of the um, cis for the res uh, re resonators. And then the R here is the um, frequency of the qubit divided by frequency the, of the resonator, the resonance frequency. So here we notice that, uh, okay, so when uh, the level spacing between the qubit is equal to the level spacing between the resonator, or we can say that the, this is in the resonance frequency of these two, they are the same, so then heat flows from the hot pass to the cold one. So you can see the experimental part here, and then we had the uh, theory model, which uh, is fits very well. This is not, by the way, fitting. This is uh, really measuring, and then we have a very uh, somehow reliable fitting parameter to obtain this uh, model. 
And then the interesting thing here, as even you can see uh, the cooling curve here. So this is uh, in when uh, this part by applying the bias, it is in the cooling uh, regime. So then heat flows from the uh, cold bath to the hot one. So it means that really we are cooling at the distance of uh, four millimeter by microwave photon, which is interesting. And then uh, another uh, model, which is a quasi Hamiltonian uh, um, model. So this is another sample that we had. The interesting thing here is for the um, somehow higher quality factor around 20. And uh, here the strong, uh, we have the stronger coupling here between the qubit and the resonator rather than uh, this resonator and then uh, this uh, thermal bath or reservoir. So here um, based on the circuit and then you can see the uh, Hamiltonian. So G is the coupling that you can see here, and then G tilde is somehow um, the coupling between the two resonator, uh, two resist, uh, yeah, resonator together, and then this A is a asymmetry parameter in the qubit. So this is how uh, this uh, level uh, spacing between the le energy level spacing, and then this is for uh, two tune um, spectroscopy measurement that uh, shows that how uh, this Hamiltonian really works for um, this setup, and uh, this is the. Uh, experimental uh, part that you can see here. Uh, so um, that, and then this is the um, experimental and the theory model that uh, shows that how heat uh, flows from uh, this side to the other one. Okay, and then uh, so uh, this is how I uh, showed that how uh, we calculate uh, how we measure uh, this uh, heat current, and then uh, okay, so the. Now the question is that how to uh, measure this heat current noise in a small metallic island. So somehow this setup is very um, uh, familiar with you that you saw um, previous in the uh, Peter's talk. So here we have our island, which is uh, um, given by here. And we have two tunnel probe, which one used as an injector and the other one as a thermometer. And then we have this uh, clean contact which is somehow uh, fix the chemical potential of the island. So we use this part, this NIS, as a uh, thermometer. And then this is somehow coupled to the phonon bus. As you can see here, there are uh, somehow, uh, we have this um, mm, thermal conductance between this tunneling between these two, and then we have this phonon coupling. Uh, so this is the things that it's matter for calculating and measuring this heat current noise. So this, uh, this is somehow uh, extra here, which we, uh, we don't need. And then somehow it really affects on the, uh, this temperature of the island. And then it, uh, the source is somehow unknown. So this is the uh, reason that why uh, we want to have a really non-invasive thermometer, the things that uh, doesn't affect on the uh, temperature of the electron here. Okay, so uh, the next thing uh, is that how we, uh, these two parts, the coupling to the phonon bus and then this um, tunneling effect uh, uh, ap uh, somehow appears in the calculation for the heat current noise in the island. And then how we used and found one way to uh, use as a non-invasive thermometer to measure the temperature. Uh, the interesting thing here is that because there is no cross correlation between the tunneling uh, between the superconductor and then the uh, normal metal and then the phonon bus, so it's interesting to know that we can uh, um, cal calculate and look at them uh, separately. Okay, so uh, now uh, this is somehow so we noticed that okay, now we have a non invasive thermometer as I showed. The U later. So this is uh, the Hamiltonian of the system. And then this is uh, somehow like a, so uh, this is that we use as a perturbation for the system. So this is uh, <coughs> for the um, electron and then superconductor and uh, the phonon bus. And this is the textbook uh, somehow relation that how uh, we uh, write the Hamiltonian for the uh, tunneling and then the electron phonon coupling. 
So uh, for uh, the electron phonon coupling to the phonon bus, so we have this operator of the uh, heat current. Uh, so and um, if we just by averaging this uh, heat current and uh, uh, using Kubo, so it's very <coughs> easy to uh, calculate this very uh, famous uh, heat current uh, into the phonon bus, which is uh, well known and uh, is given by okay many years. And then by uh, using the derivation of this equation, it's very easy to uh, calculate the um, thermal conductance to the, um, electro to the phonon bus, which is given by this equation. And then uh, by, uh, for the spectral density of two times of this equation, so for the, um, uh, using the uh, um, correlator uh, um, for the uh, heat current, and so it is easy to uh, we look at the heat uh, current noise, spectral density of the noise due to this uh, coupling, which is uh, calculated uh, in this paper. And <coughs> here, the interesting part uh, here is that if we uh, um, just look at the uh, for zero uh, frequency, it is um, proportional to the Te to the 6 plus Tp to the 6. And uh, here, um, so it's given by this equation. And uh, it's uh, interesting to know that if uh, in the case when the electron and the phonon, uh, they are the same temperature, so it's just uh, easily um, somehow satisfy the fluctuation dissipation theorem. But the interesting part about this calculating for the uh, coupling uh, to the phonon bus is that uh, this uh, non-vanishing noise at the zero temperature, uh, although it's uh, uh, based on one of the reviewer for the paper that it's Im somehow impossible to um, detect, but it's good to know that it's there. So we have it anyway. So, <coughs> and then uh, for the tunneling part, so uh, this is the heat uh, operator of the heat uh, flux uh, uh, based on the uh, tunneling. So it's the same for by applying the average of it and then using Kubo. So we have this uh, uh, heat current uh, due to the tunneling and then we have this uh, thermal conductance um, due to the tunneling for the two, from the superconductor to the, ele to the electron system or normal metal. And then this is the uh, spectral density of the noise or the noise of the heat current uh, due to the tunneling. And then it's interesting to know that here it is proportional to the uh, E minus V squared here. And then it is depend on the, uh, not only the uh, somehow um, differentiate of these two, it is somehow, it's the sum of these proportional. So it's related to the Fermi distribution of the superconductor and normal metal. Uh, so all these things together. So here, this is the uh, numerical calculation of this uh, uh, somehow heat current and the noise. So this is somehow like a simple cooling curve that uh, it's easy to, okay, this is somehow very famous. This is um, somehow average heat uh, and uh, we have this cooling effect around the uh, gap. But the interesting point here is about this, which is somehow um, it's not uh, seen yet in the experimental and this is the thing that uh, we hope to uh, measure. Uh, so about the heat current. Uh, so here you can see that we have a, a maximum and then some one minimum uh, very close to the gap. And then uh, this is uh, the red curves is when we uh, notice that, okay, we consider that we have somehow uh, overheated superconductor, which is somehow uh, more, um, more reliable because w when we apply the uh, bias to the superconductor, always it is hotter than uh, the base temperature. So, and then here, this two figure is from uh, this uh, uh, Peter's uh, talk yesterday. So here, um, if we, this is the uh, temperature fluctuation of the electron, as you can see, so it is uh, given by this temperature, so this um, heat current noise divided by this uh, G thermal, which is, as I uh, mentioned, this is, uh, it should be the um, thermal coupling uh, 
due to the electron phonon coupling and due to the tunneling both uh, together. And then, uh, okay, so we expect some, uh, somehow, this is um, when we consider that the only the temperature change and then the bias is fixed. And here we uh, consider that the um, temperature of the superconductor is uh, fixed and then we change only the um, voltage here. So this is uh, how I, uh, we expect. And then, uh, although we have a fully analytical uh, calculation for the heat current, so this is uh, the fully numerical one and then the full uh, analytical, which is somehow very close to each other. And then, uh, okay, so how, to, how we measure uh, this temperature? Uh, so uh, what is our thermometry? So uh, as you can see here, so this is uh, our setup. So uh, let's make it here, somehow make it simpler. So this is our junction here, which is we embedded in this two uh, circuit to uh, read this voltage here. So by uh, the transmission uh, voltage, so we apply voltage here and then read uh, voltage from the other side and then our junction NIS or the thermometer here. So uh, it is easy to know that uh, here, this is our uh, IV care from the NIS junction. So if we, this is somehow the things that we are measure. So it is minus a conductance of this uh, uh, resistance. So if we use the minus DI dV from this figure, so we, this is the thing that we have here in the RF measurement. And as you can see here, it is uh, uh, somehow um, sensitive to the changing to the bus temperature. So it is very good. So by uh, at a different points, if we collect and extract the data here, we have some kind of data here and then we can use it uh, for as a calibration for the system. Okay, and then this is somehow the, we, this is the calculated things, uh, not the fitting parameter. So this is good, but as you can see here, this is uh, this uh, only sensitive to the temperature down to 100, 130 milliK. Okay, but this is really somehow far from the things that you want. So this is the thing that really we need to be really at low temperature, which is now, unfortunately, this thing, it loses sensitivity at low temperature, so it's not useful for us. So it really takes, uh, took time for us to uh, understand what to do and then how to solve this problem. So this is uh, that how uh, we deal with, so this is by changing this uh, clean contact here closer to this. So we use this uh, proximity uh, effect as a somehow useful tool uh, to uh, somehow ch uh, change and solve this problem. So here, this is the same uh, minus uh, DIDV that you can see here measuring in this setup. So of course, uh, there are some many features here that we don't know where it comes from. Of course, somehow it's predictable. So it's, uh, there are some uh, assumptions that, okay, this is maybe multiple uh, unrev reflection uh, plus this proximity effect and some other things. But uh, the important thing for us is that at uh, zero bias, so it is super sensitive to the temperature, as you can see here. So, uh, and then it, it's exactly at this, so by applying the different power. So for example, for this, it is uh, um, somehow there is no saturation, even if somehow in this range, it is uh, linear. So down to 25 millik, we have a good calibration. So this is how we, we could somehow beat, um, uh, this uh, uh, effect and then uh, use it as uh, this thermometer. But of course, uh, because the peak is sharp, so it is somehow very sensitive to the applying power here. As you can see for the, uh, in the base temperature, you can see how uh, this, for example, one of these uh, figure um, somehow can change based on by applying the uh, different power. And uh, okay, so how far we are for detecting single photon? So as you can see here, this is somehow very promising, okay? So if we say that 
the base temperature uh, and then the operating temperature will be uh, 30 millik and then the energy which is somehow applying or injecting to the uh, normal metal be in the in, in this range uh, so then the um, somehow the changing for the temperature that you expect it will be uh, 1 to 3 millik and then, of course, this relaxation time, it will be in the range of uh, 10 to uh, somehow thousands uh, uh, microsecond. And then uh, the noise equivalent temperature, which is somehow square root of this ST that I uh, m uh, mentioned here, it is, if it's 10 microkelvin per square root of hertz, then it's sufficient for the single photon detection. And then, based on this thermometry that we have, uh, the number that we have right now, it is 30. So it is three order magnitude uh, higher than that. But OK, 30 is 30 is three, 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 three times. Ah, OK, three times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three times, OK. But here we have, so we have 30, so which is, it is good. OK. Yeah, of course, it's good. We are very close, I hope. So and then in summary, so we measure uh, this uh, heat current. Uh, and somehow noise in our circuits. I present the quantum motor refrigerator and then uh, I showed uh, for this uh, quantum heat switch, so based on the circuit that we have. And then uh, I introduced this uh, non-invasive and fast thermometry for down to 25 millikay. Thank you.